Hello and welcome everyone to this first episode of Generation Meme. This is your host Lutfi Hakim Arif and as we've hinted in the previous episode of The Rise, we were going to make some changes to the podcast. So here we are. What is Gen Meme? In a nutshell, Generation Meme looks at the issues that we face as a generation that's growing up. We'll talk to the people who can share their experiences and thoughts on these topics. And maybe it'll help us, maybe you'll we'll have a better idea of what's going on and how to deal with these issues. Joining me this week on Gen Meme is Muiz, and we'll talk about burnout with this episode's guest, Dr. Johan Arif. This episode was recorded earlier before the lockdown in Malaysia began, about a month ago now. Given that there's still another two weeks to go, I think it's still quite appropriate. To the listeners out there in your homes, whether alone or with your families, stay safe, stay connected, and don't forget to wash your hands. I am Dr. Johan. I work in one of the hospitals in the Klang Valley because I don't want to say which because I might get into trouble and also because you guys might look for me. I'm I'm not a celebrity. Oh my god. Well, not yet. <laughs> you will be. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I am a doctor, a medical doctor in uh, psycho- psychological medicine or psychiatry. So, um, yeah, so Lutfi, as my very, very, very old friend. I mean, not that old. Earlier today, Lutfi told me that he's going to keep this loose. And in 20 years of knowing him, I've never seen him loose. So, so this, this so might be interesting. let's loosen him up today. Ooh. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for that um, very preemptory threat. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, how long have you been practicing uh, psychiatry? Okay, um, I graduated and started working in 2011, so that's nine years of being a medical doctor. Uh, specifically in psychiatry, I started a while in 2013 for about six months, and I went to the to a um, district hospital where I became the head of psychiatry of that hospital. Sounds very grand, but I was the only doctor, and I had one nurse and one driver, that's it. So, yeah, so you're the head uh, of one lah. Yes, like, but it's good. It looks good on my um, resume. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's two and a half years there, I think. And then I was in a mental health institution for as a doctor. Yeah, I was there for another maybe two and a half years too. Uh, now I'm in a hospital in in the city, doing psychiatry. So I guess. Uh, my experience with psychiatry has been at least seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I did become a doctor because I wanted to become a psychiatrist. So the interest was there for a very long time. So yeah. let's jump straight into it. Then now, how would you define this? <laughs> it's very hard to define, but now, but now, um, but now is a very real thing, and everybody faces it. It doesn't matter whether you're a, you're an intellectual or. You work in the office, or you are, you are more of a um, practical kind of guy who um, works. I don't know even even like construction workers or things like um, your cleaner, your your maids. They they do experience burnout too. It's a very universal experience, and it has been on for a very long time. So um, what burnout is is this feeling of being tired, being exhausted, being it's like a mini depression of sort. We do not have a proper diagnosis as we discussed earlier of burnout, but I guess if you want to fit it in, you can fit it in say um, adjustment disorder if it's something that is very recent. Uh, if it has gone down for years and years, you can, you can label it as a persistent depressive disorder. Um, I mean, so, this all sounds quite serious because you're saying, you know, mm. persistent, depressive. But I mean, what, what, how, how does that translate into just regular language? I mean, do you okay. like? I mean, do you just feel tired all the time? Do you just feel demotivated? It falls under the spectrum of uh, depressive disorder. So, uh, dis- depressive disorder, we have a lot. We have like the seasonal ones. We have the major depressive disorder. We have the persistent, and so forth and so forth, right? So um, the symptoms are quite common, are quite um, general in that uh, spectrum. So when you talk about these disorders, you are talking about 
you know, fatigue, waking up feeling tired even though you have a full night's sleep, um, or you can't sleep at all, or you sleep too much, or your appetite goes uh, haywire, either eating too much, eating too little, nothing can satisfy you, you enjoy nothing, and things like that. But burnout is very specific to something, something you do routinely in your life. So you find burnout in work. Uh, mostly people people talk about being burnt out at work, but uh, sometimes you forget that even those who, uh, who are like homemakers and um, who are taking care of their kids or even their family, they, they can get burnt out too. So <laughs> would you say that it's a motivational problem or a functional problem? Like as a doctor, hmm. If someone came to you and asked you, okay, I doc, I think I'm suffering from burnout. Mm. You know, I'm stressed at work. I'm stressed at home. I can't seem to think straight. I can't seem to get out of bed. Or I just feel so tired and I feel so angry and I feel so like emotional. Maybe like they feel quite dysregulated in mm, a way. Mm. Um, what would be your first like course of action? Like, what would you try to figure out from this person? So that's the thing, right? Nobody comes to the doctor to say that they are burnt out. Or at least they don't come when they are in the state of burnt out. So usually when they, they come to us, they are already depressed. Mm, right. right? Okay. Yeah, because I mean, if burnt out is... You, you don't know whether you're just being really, really tired all the yeah, time. Or, yeah. You know? So it, it, is something that, it is something that we don't see so much as medical practitioners. Because first of all, in Malaysia... To come to the um, psychiatric clinic, it's a whole. It takes a lot out of you, right? Um, we have patients who actually uh, contacted us uh, through our um, uh, PR uh, arm in the hospital, right? Like they actually come to our clinic, sit in the waiting room for hours just to build up the courage to to register, and sometimes they don't, mm. right? And most of the time they don't, right? Mm. And that's the thing. So usually when when they see us, they are already very, very bad already. Like in the sense that uh, they are already depressed. Okay. And yeah. So if you are talking about pure burnout, right? If it's just burnout in the first stage, then the best cause of action is taking a break, actually. If you come to me and you say you have a burnout from work, blah, blah, blah. I think, and if I think that it is, Till just burn out, and uh, the first thing I would do is an MC. I I would give you an MC and give you maybe a week's off or whatever, just to get mm. refreshed again. Okay. okay. Burnout is a universal problem. It doesn't discriminate between people. It doesn't care whether you work in an office or you work out in the fields or whether you live alone or you're with your family. Anyone can have burnout. If that's the case, then how do we identify the signs that show that we're burnt out? And more importantly. How can we manage ourselves when we have so many other things on our plate to worry about? We put these questions to Dr. Johan in this next section. Someone might come to you and you would give them... Uh, you basically just tell them, oh, you know, why don't you take a few days off? Yeah. Yeah. Does that usually happen though? No, it never happens. If, uh, <laughs> the thing is, we as doctors, we are experienced but now too. And especially... Uh, I don't know whether it's especially psychiatry, but because I've been around in, with psychiatric people, uh, they actually give us extra leaves, right. uh, like extra two weeks of leave, of leave a year. Why is that? Yeah, because we, I think, we get burnt out more than most people. Because right. what uh, what we do is we take on the uh, problem of other people, right? Like we, you're listening to people complaining and blah blah blah, and you have your own, um, you you have your own thing to, to attend to, attend to too, and. You don't. You just don't have any anywhere to release that. But yeah, um, I've experienced burnout very regularly. <laughs> maybe like maybe once a month or twice a month, uh, twice a uh, once in two months. I mean, to the point that you know, um, I love psychiatry. I it's on most days I wake up looking forward to go to work, and looking forward to do therapy and so forth. But sometimes, you know, after a while, after not taking a break for a long time, it gets to me and I experience burnout. And we are lucky because we, are, we recognize this, right? And our bosses recognize this and they, they are very open to give us breaks and more understanding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it, it doesn't have to be that you 
hate what you're doing to experience burnout. So it's mm. just, I mean, is it, is it almost like some kind of an occupational hazard? Because like, I think um, mm. like a lot of people who um, live and work in KL, I've gotten used to some kind of um, really um, grueling schedule. You know, you're, li- you're leaving your, your house very early in the morning or somewhere early in the morning and then that's the commute and then you're there for you know as long as it takes to do whatever it is you do at work. Mm. Um, maybe you'll leave at six thirty seven. I mean, the whole idea of an uh, of a nine to five, nine to six is um, the ideal, lah. You know, mm. no one ever leaves on time. Mm. Naturally, you'll feel very tired, lah. You know, at the yeah. end of, and, and at the end of the day. Mm. Um, so how like how do you recognize almost like the onset of feeling burnt out? For me, the first thing that I f- I would e- experience when I'm having a burnout is that I don't want to wake up. I don't want to go to work, uh, and that usually sends a signal to me, and, and I'll be like, "Hey, this is this is burnout." Yeah, uh, and it differs from people to people, uh, person to person, right? So um, you could you might not love your job. You might think of it as just a way to uh, to get make ends meet. Make make ends meet, and that's fine, right? That's totally fine. But you might start feel you might start to hate your job, or you might uh, get angry or irritable, or you might feel anxious. There's no universal starting point for everyone, so it depends on how you experience as a person. The, but the most important thing is for you to. Recognize that basically the the end point of a burnout is when you just want everything to stop, right? Um, you just don't want to. What What do you mean by everything? Is it like when you lose the will to live? You know, functionality perhaps. Not necessarily, but uh, once you start feeling like I don't want to face school again, or I don't want to face. Uh, I just want to have my me time and. Like I said before, it's not necessarily work. It could be with your social life. It could be with school. It could be with your kids, your your parents. Like I said, it, there's no there's no universal starting point. So mm-hmm. you have to. The onus is on you to recognize and to um, to tell yourself, "Hey, I'm having a burnout, and mm-hmm. I deserve a break." We know that you know it's it's nice. To, you the idea sort of like the the big ideas that well, we need to have some time. Uh, to look after ourselves, mm. self care, if you will. Self care, yeah. Self care yeah. is warfare. That's what Audrey Lord <laughs> said, right? So I don't um, understand what that means. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Neither do I. No, we love it, yeah. But okay, millennial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the idea of self care has um, become really popular mm. um, with a lot of millennials, mm. and I think we have to kind of clarify a lot. So, like for me, my experience is that self care is good is useful mm. if you can recognize what actually is like what soccer actually is mm. is it going for a massage is it going for yoga class mm. or is it just um blocking out time for yourself mm. to just try to relax so yeah. so i think um there is this idea that self-care is crucial just to kind of as a safeguard against the the, the mundane stresses or the you know or, or all these things that you have to do with at work and you say oh you know I need this cigarette or I mm. need this drink mm. on a Friday night but the ecosystem is kind of geared towards yes you need it please buy our thing it's, it's good that you mentioned that because I am quite um, at the very least skeptical of the whole idea of self care because I feel mm. just another um, excuse for selling people more things, and the, yeah, the, the, the kind of like promoting, enough. oh, you know, you have to look after yourselves, you know, go to this massage, take this holiday, and yeah. it becomes very. I mean, there's a very it's set like commercial, very commercial idea of this is self care, hmm. um, and you do that because that's what expected of you. People yeah. do it because it feels good, and feeling good helps to buffer the bad feelings around feeling yeah. burnt oh, out. But, but that's oh, the thing, you know, the, the whole idea of feeling good is also in a way prescribed, you know, this this very capitalist system of <laughs> saying, <laughs> or, you yes, know. Yes, yeah. yes, So yes. it's very late capitalism. It <laughs> is very late capitalism. I think, yeah, I think we need, we, but, we need to go there. Okay, so I, I agree with you. The idea of uh, self-care has been quite commercialized. It's, but that's 
the issue with and I think this will make me is very happy but that's the issue with late capitalism yes. it's like everything that is good is being perverted into something that makes money mm. right and getting things that what constitutes as a, a self care right mm. so self care is very individualized right yes. like um, it's very unique what is self care for me might not appeal to you or might not even, even be relaxing to you like you said uh Luffy. So, uh, for example, some people actually find joy, actually find uh, relief in retail therapy, and that's no, no, fine. of course, of course, of I, course. But you I, were you were looking down. <laughs> no, I buy ago. more things than I should <laughs> because they make me feel good, and it's and yeah. it's good. I mean, it's it's a good feeling, and you know that helps to ease some stress, I suppose. Then you have to recognize whether it's um, it's self care or it's diversion. Yes. Right. Yes. So, what do you mean by diversion? So, like, uh, what we say, right? When you buy something, you get a lot of uh, like a dopamine rush and right. things like that, right? You have to stop and think to yourself: Is this uh, retail therapy, as we say? It, um, is this something that truly is it a, a way how I relieve my stress, or is it a way for me to get that dopamine rush and to kind of like mask our bad feelings? Right. I don't think if it's the latter, I don't think that's uh, that's self care. Mm-hmm. I think that's just, you know, we that's just our self defense. It's a coping mechanism. It's a coping right. mechanism, right? We we fully focus on those that bad feeling, uh, uh, that good feeling that you get from shopping and or whatever it is, right? And not um, and it's very dangerous because it, it leads to addiction, right? right. Because you need to get that high and that's the only way you know how to get that high. Yeah, but in real terms, how can you differentiate? How can you differentiate? Okay, so look at it this way. If you do, if you're stressed, right? And you do something, do you feel better afterwards? Mm-hmm. Right? And, uh, Isn't that the point? No, but yeah. you do feel better because you're there. But, but you feel worse after you feel better. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So does the bad feeling, the stress level go away or is it just put on hold? If you do something, uh, you're stressed, you do something, and then once the good feeling goes away, you're back to that level of stress uh, immediately. Then that is something that you should be concerned about. So you have to realize that that is you not solving the problem. You're just Mm. distracting yourself. While it's important to know how to take care of ourselves and take breaks, we also know that the awareness about mental health issues is still an issue. There is also still that stigma that people are afraid of that stops them from seeking help. We asked Dr. Johan for his ideas on overcoming these issues. This is going to be like something that is very cliche. People would say it's very cliche, but I think Gandhi said it best. You have to be the change that you want to see in the world, <sighs> right? So if you yourself are not taking care of your mental health, right? If it, it must start with you. It must start with the building blocks, right? To change the whole house. If you don't, if you just hope the house would change on its own, that's not gonna happen. And it's the same with everything, be it politi- uh, politics, be it uh, mental health and whatnot, right? You want to create me- awareness in mental health, you have to be aware of your own mental health first, right? Yes. And from the patients that I know, or even my friends that, that do seek uh, mental health, uh, health help, or even myself, you naturally will draw other people because people will see that you you have improved in some ways right mm-hmm. regarding your mental health maybe you don't you're not 80 percent all right maybe you're just 20 percent all right right but people will see that difference and they will come to you and this will create a chain effect and slowly um but surely the progress will happen but why would they come to you because everyone is looking for that that improvement everyone's looking for some kind of solution correct a lot has changed in recent years I agree um, and that's been really good uh, but of course it's not perfect and I think there, re- there still needs to be a lot of work done for outreach I agree but th- that's the thing again it comes back to the building block right I yes. feel like and this is something that you might you won't hear me say very often also I think that the thing that helps with expression mental health now is social media hmm. okay that's very counterintuitive <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because like now with social media, people are more open about their own struggles with mental health. 
and you can see that in even in the Tumblr days, right, where people talk about their mental health, or even during the blogspot days, it, you will find anonymous questions asking about how has it been and things like that because everybody is having the same experience, right, and just in different forms. So again, um, the reason why we are talking about it now is because the few people who actually started getting help and things like that are speaking up, right? Uh, they realize that, you know what, this is not a shame that I need to uh, tell you. This is actually something that I should share. You have to be the prophets of mental health, mm -hmm. in a way. You have, to, you have to share it, right? If you want to talk about extreme responsibility, uh, <laughs> you can say that I, for doing that, am responsible for the world being as it is today. But of course, we're not talking about extreme responsibility, and it all depends on you. If, mm -hmm. you're, if you feel that you need to share about it, if you want to share about it, then that's good. But and that will certainly help uh, the awareness in, in the long run. But And if you don't want to share about it, then that's also on you. Right? That, mm -hmm. That's also mm -hmm. your prerogative. I, I am a firm believer that everything starts with yourself. Right? Uh, compassion, kindness. Yeah, and compassion, kindness towards yourself first before others. Because the thing is, if you're not compassionate towards yourself, how can you be compassionate towards others? RuPaul said that if you can't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? Which is true, right? And it's not, um, it's not only about love. It's about kindness. It's about uh, compassionate. Like, if you are being very hard on yourself, you cannot be not hard on other people. We unfortunately have to bring this to a close because um, our time is running out. But yeah, I mean, definitely there's a lot of things that um, we still need to, to explore with the issue. Um, do you have any suggestions where people can find out more or resources or things to look up for? Okay, I think that, I think a great starting point like we discussed just now was, what was it again? <laughs> what therapy was it again? Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Mindfulness, yeah. Mindful therapy, right? Yeah. Mindfulness therapy is a very good name and it's a very easy thing to do. It's the hardest thing to do, to do in the world, but it's very easy. <laughs> Whatever you call it, mindfulness is a great thing. And you can do it, if you're a religious person, you can do it in the form of ZK and whatnot, or mantra or whatever, right? Uh, and if you're not a religious person, you can just do it in the form of being aware of where you, what you're doing. That's the first step. Secondly, if you are in a position where you fear about your mental health and whatnot, um, do seek uh, medical attention. Um, there will be roadblocks, uh, especially from yourself and sometimes from the doctors too. If you are serious about improving yourself, please don't give up. Uh, we have uh, the Ministry of Health actually came out with a mental health handbook mm, yeah. uh, in December. I think it's freely online. Um, you can Google and just download it legally without paying any single cent, and that would be a good guide to as where to go on right? they have contacts to all the different hospitals throughout the country they have um, explanation about the major mental illnesses and things like that uh, again to, to be to improve yourself to be better it, it has to come from you I think one of my, my mantras with my patients is that I'm not doing anything I'm just here to be a mirror like I'm just here to point out things that you already know and things like that right so and that's still true it comes uh, the change comes from the person itself it doesn't come from any anybody not even the doctors and that's all for this first episode of Jan Mean I hope you found the discussion with Dr. Johan useful and helpful please do leave us comments on our social media at Instagram or Twitter and rate us wherever you listen to this podcast we also now have videos of these interviews up online, which you can watch on YouTube. You can find all the links and details of this in the details of this episode. That's all for now. See you soon.